of Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Ohio. a picture-perfect night for baseball in downtown Cincinnati and a crowd rolling into Great American Ballpark for the final game and the decisive game of this three-game series between division rivals, the Brewers and the Reds. And hi again, everybody. Alongside Chris Welsh, I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Reds Baseball on Fox Sports Ohio. And tonight is the final game of 20 consecutive days the Reds have played. They'll get an off day tomorrow. And then they rev it up again. Overall, it's 33 out of 34 days. But, Chris, they badly need the day off tomorrow. Well, 20 days is pushing the limit. That's about the most you can play under the general agreement between players and owners. But Dusty Baker's been looking for tomorrow as a day off. But what have the Reds done during the 20 days that they've played? That's what now time to take a look back. They've had a five-game winning streak and a six-game losing streak. They've been outscored by almost 20 runs during that time. And they've lost some ground. They went from one and a half games behind to a game and a half ahead to now five games behind overall since May the 13th and 11 and, or 8 and 11 record three games under 500 so that's where the Reds are not great obviously not something to panic about but this is a ball club that's got to get healthy find some momentum and have some fun playing baseball and I think the rest of this road trip is something that they'll be able to do that on and do it well all right when we come back we'll tell you about tonight's starting pitches for the Reds need a big outing from Mike Leak.
authority of the Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Boy, you couldn't ask for a more beautiful early summer day and early evening than we have here in downtown Cincinnati tonight. What about the remainder of this evening? Let's check in with our good friend Tim Hedrick. Tommy Brenneman, this is one of those nights where you just want to be down at the ballpark. First pitch, 85, halfway home, 80, heading for home, 74 degrees. No crack of the bat tonight. Just make contact. Play some small ball. Let's get one from the Brew Crew. Have a good game on Fox Sports Ohio. Timmy's our man. And he knows Mike Leak is on the hill tonight for the Red Legs. Well, Mike Leak was the man last time he took the hill for the Red Legs. That was down in Atlanta. Did a great job down there. He's had ten, seven starts overall, ten appearances for Mike Leak. A little more effort into his body work last time, and it really paid off. Although tonight he is facing a right-hander in Sean Markham that has thrown the ball about as well as anybody in the league. He's got a nice little curveball, but boy, does he ever have a changeup that he just loves, especially against left-handers. He'll throw it time after time after time. In fact, he throws more changeups than anybody else in the National League. We're going to see a lot of that tonight. We'll see which one of these right-handers ends up on top. State Farm. State Farm agents are there when you need them. Find an agent or get a quote at statefarm.com. By your local Ford dealer. Ford, drive one. By the Regional Tourism Network. Book your trip at CincinnatiUSA.com and by Skyline. Whenever you're feeling good and hungry, it's Skyline time. Reds have taken the field defensively. They won the opening game of this series over the Brewer two nights ago, 7-3. Milwaukee rebounding with a 7-2 win last night. And now Ron Renneke starting lineup for the finale. As Ricky Weeks at second, Nigel Morgan in center, Ryan Braun in left, Prince Fielder at first, Corey Hart in right, Jonathan Lucroy catching. Bettencourt the shortstop, Craig Council his first start of the series at third. And Sean Markham on the mound and starting for the Reds coming off a nice start in Atlanta. His right-hander, Mike Leak. That would be Michael Raymond Leak, born in San Diego, drafted out of Arizona State by the Reds right to the big leagues. He did do some minor league time, as you know, this year, and he makes his eighth start tonight. And the Reds needed him to come up big during his last start. That was against the Atlanta Braves, and he did just that. 
So you hope that here on this rubber game getaway day for the Milwaukee Brewers they head down to Florida after tonight's game and they get a day off like the Reds do but they'll be down on the beaches of South Florida. They like to celebrate with a win and Mike Leake would like to stand right in their way of that celebration. Ricky Weeks digging in. A 288 batter, nine home runs and 22 batted in. Strike one says Tim Timmons. We're underway. What about Tim Timmons behind the plate? Well, Tim Timmons not quite as generous with the strike zone as last night's umpire Eric Cooper. One percent fewer called strikes for Timmons than for Cooper. That ball scalded into left field off the bat of Weeks, and he's done it again. Let off another game with a home run right here at Great American Ballpark, just as he did on opening day. One batter, one nothing Milwaukee. Now yeah, that was a fastball on an 0 1 count, and you got to know that this guy might be one of the better fastballs in the National League. That is his 10th home run, so he really gives you that dimension of power at the top of the lineup. And that is in his hot zone. I mean, anybody who stands up there and waggles the bat like Ricky Weeks is almost challenging you to say, all right, try to throw it by me up here. And you just can't do it. Not when you're topping out at 88. You've got to have a little better idea there. This ball hammered off the bat of Niger Morgan, and that'll rattle in the corner. And this will probably be at least two, maybe three for Morgan, who can fly. And it is a triple. Three pitches in the game and a home run and a three base hit for the Brewers against Mike Lee. Well, they are coming out swinging early and often against Mike Leake. And as I remember, Tom, it was in a spring training game against the same Milwaukee Brewer team down in, in uh, Goodyear, Arizona. That they came in and they jumped on Mike Leake when he came into the ball game on the first pitch that he threw out there almost every batter. I think and you did the game with me, I believe, that yep. night, that day. Remember how aggressive the, the Brewers were? They know that Mike Leake throws strikes. He knows a lot of first pitch fastballs. He's got to figure out something else to do here on the first pitch or early in the count or else he'll be backing up third a lot tonight. Ricky Weeks has hit three leadoff home runs this entire year and all three of them have come in this ballpark. And tonight is the sixth game the Brewers have played in this ballpark this year. Chris, we've talked about it once. We've talked about it a hundred times in the meetings with the Brewers. You keep throwing fastballs anywhere from the middle of the plate into Ricky Weeks, and he'll keep doing exactly what he just did. Well, the location of the fast, I mean, it's the fastball is the biggest thing. You can throw a fastball, but you've got to locate it, and you can't throw it up to him. He's a very good high fastball hitter, especially when you have a modest speed on your fastball, and that's where Mike Leake pitches, very modest in that respect. Ryan Braun, the batter, kind of one and one, now two balls and a strike. Braun with 39 runs batted in. He has 12 home runs, carries a 3-12 batting average. League made one start this year in Milwaukee when the Reds won two out of three there the final week of April and threw the ball very well. Seven innings, seven hits, only two runs allowed. And he's in danger of giving up two runs through three batters here tonight. Well, at this point, you're looking at damage control, and the odds will tell you that somehow the Brewers will probably figure out a way to get Niger Morgan in from third base. But if you're Mike Lee, let's start getting outs right now. Even if it's a sacrifice fly, that's fine. But let's get outs and get off the field. Three and two on Braun. So the numbers here on Ryan Braun uh, for a big RBI guy and boy he's been every bit of that since the second he stepped in the major leagues he does not have particularly good numbers under the league average and bringing in a runner at third and less than two men out. They'll bring him in this time. So Lee gets his first out of the inning, but not before the Brewers have scored a second time. Let's take a look at the Reds on defense presented by Ford. Some changes from the first couple of nights. Fred Lewis gets a start out in left field. Stubbs in center, Bruce in right. Cairo for Roland at third. Again, it's run to Riyadh short. And a battery of Leak and Ryan Hannigan. One out, two in, Prince fielded the batter. Ball one.
Outfielder leads the Brewers in RBIs with 42. He has 11 home runs and carries a 287 average. A ball and a strike to Prince Fielder. Brewers five games over the 500 mark going into play here tonight. They have been lights out at home, having won 21 of 28 games. The only series they've lost at home all year long was when the Reds went in there at the end of April, beat them two out of three. But they struggled on the road. Only nine wins in 27 games. Two and two on field. Reds put on the big shift defensively. That one rolled over foul behind the plate. It remains two and two. You have Renteria playing about 15 feet to the first base side of the second base bag. And wouldn't you know it, he hits the ball the other way and just drops it into left field. Well, he hit a changeup right there, got it off the end of the bat. Not all that bad of a pitch by Mike Leak. But you're facing a very good hitter in Prince Fielder who is very hot. Great play coverage. He stays behind the ball. You know, when you're facing Mike Leak, you don't really have to worry about him rearing back and throwing a 95 mile an hour fastball by you. So you can wait a little bit longer. And if you're willing to take the ball the other way, you may have some success. And Prince Fielder has figured that out. Now, Corey Hart. In their strike. Part of 276, five home runs, 14 runs batted in. Hit a three run home run in that four run third inning, propelling the Brewers to the win here last night. Two-step lead over there at first base. And that runs inside, nearly hitting height. One ball and two strikes. You may have noticed at the very end of that pitch, after Ryan Hannigan caught it, he pointed to his own left shoulder, which meant to Mike Lee, keep your shoulder closed. That ball's running all over the place right now because Leak may be a little bit anxious, just flying open a little bit. As a big league pitcher, you've got to be number one, your own best pitching coach, and usually number two on the pitching coach list is your catcher. He's a guy that can come out there and talk to you without wasting a, a trip to an official trip to the mound. And again, very good about trying to keep his pitchers in sync. In the air and playable, Stubbs drifting over and will give way to Jay Bruce, and there are two away here in the Brewers' first inning. Injuries, of course, to Homer Bailey and Johnny Cueto. Leak started the year in the rotation. And actually, four of his five starts to begin the first month of the year were very, very good. He had one dismal start in Arizona. Pitching, of course, where he pitched collegiately right down the road at Arizona State. But two runs in six innings against Houston. Got roughed up by the Diamondbacks, came back. Gave up two runs and six innings against the Pirates. This one in foul ground. And Hannigan tracks it to retire the side. But the Brewers score twice. The Reds are coming to bat.
starting lineup tonight. It'll be Stubbs, Phillips, and Votto at the top. Jay Bruce again in the four hole with Edgar Renteria batting fifth. Fred Lewis in left field will bat six with the latter third of Miguel Cairo, Ryan Hannigan, and Mike Leake. Against former Toronto Blue Jay, whom the Reds handed a loss his second game of the year here at Great American Ballpark. In fact, that was his Brewers debut. But this guy's pretty tough, Sean Markham. Well, he really is. He's had 11 starts. That's more than most of the starters around the National League. He's made the most of them. With a 6-2 and two record, he has given the Brewers seven quality starts. And he's a guy you wouldn't think so, Tom, but he is the leader of all pitchers in the National League as a swing and miss ratio. No, he's not overpowering. No, he doesn't have a devastating breaking ball. But what he does do is have a very good idea of how to use his changeup, change his speeds on it a lot, keeps it around the strike zone, and he'll throw a lot of strikes tonight. Bruce Tubbs to lead things off, and he looks at ball one down low. Now, Markham allowed the four runs in his first start. Here at Great American Ballpark, but ever since then on the road, boy, has he been good. Yeah, Three total runs allowed in over 34 innings. Yeah, if you remember that first start that Markham had against the Reds, it was his first time off the disabled list, and they actually wanted him to spend a little bit more time in rehab. He wanted to get up there. The Brewers needed him very badly in that starting rotation because they had already lost Zach Greinke. And he was very wild that night, and I'll tell you what, he is committed, I'm sure, to throw a lot more strikes tonight. He walked five batters in his Brewer debut that night. He would walk a total of six more batters through five more starts the rest of that month. There's a liner caught by Ryan Braun. Hard hit ball by Stubbs, but it's allowed out. You know, Markham is an interesting pitcher because he throws so many changeups. Oftentimes, and even back in the day, a pitcher would only throw a changeup to an opposite hitting batter. For instance, a right handed pitcher to a left handed batter, that's when the changeup works the best. Now, Markham will throw him to right handers and left handers equally as much. So he gives the right handed hitters a lot more to think about because he also has a couple of different kinds of breaking balls. Brandon at 295, five home runs, 30 runs batted in. Milwaukee got a leadoff home run to start the game from Ricky Weeks. The next batter tripled. That was Niger Morgan, and he scores on a ground out by Braun. So 2 0 Milwaukee. 1 and 1 to Brandon Phillips. days ago they released the first round of voting for the All-Star game and perhaps no greater indication of the kind of player and the kind of respect that he has become and that he is garnering than for Brandon Phillips who despite in a league where there are a lot of second basemen that get a lot of publicity there are other second basemen that play in the National League that probably play in front of huge home crowds Brandon Phillips is the National League leader by a lot in the first round of voting at second base. And every time you turn the TV on, you're seeing him make a, a terrific defensive play. First two retired in the inning. We take a look at Milwaukee on defense, brought to you by Ford. Nigel Morgan to start in center, flanked by Braun and Hart. Council the only change along the infield from the first two games. Markham and Lucroy in the battery. Joey Votto at 330. Six home runs and 30 runs batted in. So frequently drawing walk after walk after walk, the major league leader in that category. One for three with a walk here last night after walking twice in the series open. Ah. 
on the outside corner that'll even the count to Votto at two and two. That one served in the left field and that is a beautiful piece of hitting right there by the Reds first baseman. Yeah that ought to be the philosophy of every left handed hitter that goes up there to face Sean Markham. Hit the ball the other way. Go up there prepared to look at a ball in the outer part of the plate. Even one down and out of the zone like that. I mean, you'll do that on your first or second pitch, but eventually you're going to work him to the count. You get two strikes on you, and he's going to go down and away like that. You've got to be committed to hit that ball to left field. Joey Votto has now reached base in 54 of the 56 games in which he has played this year. Pulled foul by Jay Bruce, strike one. Our Farmers Insurance report card on Jay Bruce. What a month, what a month, what a month. Man, there's no other way to put it except exactly like that. Pretty much unconscious if you want to look at it like that. 342 average, 12 home runs, 33 driven in. The ballots went out today to vote for the National League Player, Pitcher, and Rookie of the Month. And while nothing is promised or guaranteed, it's probably a pretty good bet that Jay Bruce will be named on the heels of being named the National League's Player of the Week, the Player of the Month. You know, would you have made that bet at the end of April? No. Yeah. You? Absolutely not. I mean, he had as, as good a month of May as he did a miserable month of April. He's always been kind of streaky. And the young players are going to be streaky. I mean, until they figure it out, and it, it's kind of a roller coaster ride for a young player. Remember, Jay Bruce is only 24 years old. But boy, did he show really signs of maturing here in the month of May. One and two to Bruce, and he struck him out. So I hit a man left. We played one where the Brewers lead the Reds 2 0. He's called 1 800 Elk Ohio. We've talked about the taxation on this Reds bullpen. Just look at the last 12 games alone. Look at the other teams that are on this list who have, where their teams have pitched so many innings out of the bullpen Kansas City, Toronto, and San Diego. These aren't guys, these aren't teams that are leading the, the, their respective division. So that gives you a pretty good idea of why you don't want to be on that list. When your starters are forcing your, your bullpenners to come in and cover that many innings, that's a tough thing to handle as a manager. Ladder third in the batting order. Unieski Betancourt, Craig Council, and Sean Markham against Mike Leak. Brewer scored twice in the first inning. And Betancourt behind in the count after fouling it away. One ball and two strikes.
Red and Court a 220 batter, three home runs and 18 batted in. Bettencourt has had some very good offensive seasons. And he bangs that one into center field. That'll be a leadoff hit. Clearly has not swung the bat well through the first two months as a Brewer. But it would not be a surprise to see him and McGee pick it up over the last four months. This has got to be one that really bothers Mike Leake because he prides himself on getting in a really good fielding position to be able to snag those balls that come back up through the middle. Bettencourt just trying to stay alive there. And hits it right back through the middle for a base hit. So a performance Honda Exmo. Council, who starts in place of Casey McGee down at third, and he jumps all over that pitch, looking at foul and out of play. Council, very little playing time this year. Guys like Bettencourt and Weeks and McGee at short, second, third have been playing regularly. Whereas Council has seen significant playing time the last couple of years. Two years ago, Ricky Weeks missed nearly the entire year. And then last year, Council saw a lot of time at short. One and one. Wink's already clubbing a home run in the game here tonight. He has 10 of them so far this season. Certainly on pace to be right around where he was a year ago. Finally stayed healthy and had that big breakout year the Brewers have been waiting on since making him a number one pick. Taking a lot of time out there on the mound between throwing over to first, and you're talking about a guy in Bettencourt who has run one time all year. Now, the Brewers are an aggressive team under Ron Renneke and might play hit and run with a guy like Council at the plate. But apparently, Leak is either having a hard time getting on the same page as Hannigan or is particularly concerned about the hit and run. see Council down there. He's just shaking his head wondering what is going on. And Chris, I ask you, what is going on? Well, I'm just turning through over to first and Bettencourt standing with one foot on the back. Well, Tom, a lot of those throwovers by right-handers especially come from the dugout. Catcher will put the sign down. It means that Chris Byer or Dusty Baker want him to throw over to shorten up the lead a little bit. I'm not saying you can't throw over on your own or whether every one of those because we didn't have the shot from center field at that moment when he was putting the signs down. But Chris Spire you see him at the top step of the dugout he's giving signs to Ryan Hanning at every pitch those are defensive signs not what the what the pitch type is but what to do. Well, when it went to two and one you knew they'd start a run and a bouncing ball to the right side Phillips slows out council but Bettencourt into second base one out in the inning. Good job by. Great counsel to get that ball on the ground and over to the right side. You know, it makes a lot of sense when you have a guy like Mike Leak to hit, do a hit and run. He gets ground balls, number one. He doesn't strike out a lot of batters, number two. And when you really want to put the ball in play, he won't overpower you with a fastball where you're going to have a strike him out or a throw him out type of situation. And a good contact guy like counsel does what he was asked to do. Markham three hits and 21 at bats has a double and one run batted in. They're gonna let him swing away with one out in the inning. And he takes a breaking ball for a strike. Oh. 
You know, we talked about the three home runs leading off a game this year here at Great American Ballpark by Ricky Weeks. Reds pitchers have now allowed four home runs, all of them here at home, by the first batter in a game. Weeks against Edinson Volquez on opening day. As Markham has gone swinging two outs in the inning. Weeks got Bronx and Arroyo three days later. Andrew McCutcheon on the 17th got Volquez here and now Weeks tonight. And here comes Ricky for a second time. Second, Milwaukee leading 2 0. And the pitch to Ricky Weeks. A breaking ball in the inside corner, a called strike. Second base and a swing and a miss. Another off speed pitch to get ahead 0 and 2. A back to back breaking balls from Mike Leak against Ricky Weeks. That's a pretty good plan. A little different swing he has on that slow off speed stuff, especially the curveball that he has on a nice fastball. Anybody who holds his hands down there like that, just about right off the solar plexus or even down around the waist, is challenging you with the fastball. He's saying, you know what, this is kind of an unconventional way to hold my hands. They told Eric Davis for years, you'll never be able to hit like that, young man. Your hands aren't fast enough. Well, his hands were fast enough. And Ricky Weeks is the same way. He wants that fastball. He's challenging you to that fastball by holding his hands low like that. One or two to weeks. A couple of day games in the National League earlier this afternoon. Another win for Houston over the Cubs, a three to one final, and Washington beat Philadelphia two to one. Later tonight, the Giants and the Cardinals, after the Giants rallied with three, or the Cardinals rather, rallied with three in the bottom half of the eighth inning to beat the Giants four to three. But Tim Lincecum on the mound tonight for San Francisco. Cairo going to go ahead and put the tag on Bettencourt. That's a bad base running right there by Bettencourt. Am I wrong about that? He could have made himself a little tougher out. <laughs>
Ohio Friday night at 6 o'clock. It'll be your chance to test your Reds knowledge and win some great prizes. And who knows, you might end up on Reds Live after the game. Be part of the fun at the Holy Grail Banks right across from Great American Ballpark on Joe Nuxall Way. All right, Brewers with a 2 0 lead. Sean Markham to face Edgar Renteria. And there's strike one. You're just tuning in. The Brewers scored both their runs in the first inning off Mike Leak. Reds had a two out hit by Votto in the first inning, but that was it. On the ground to Betancourt. And he throws it into the dugout. Maybe he got shaken up running into Cairo, running between second and third to end the inning. Well, you know what he really does? He doesn't put a lot on his ball. He just kind of flips it over there. And when you don't finish your throw, you're going to leave it high. You release it the same place you would normally, but you don't follow through with it. That's more, I mean, that's a, a physical error, yes, but it's a mental and preparation error on his part that led to the physical error. We'll see if the Reds can take advantage of that. Aaron throw by the Milwaukee shortstop. Here's Fred Lewis. Lewis getting the nod out in left field at 269 batted. And the first pitch breaking ball low and away. Of course, Lewis and Markham were teammates last year in Toronto. Only at bat for Lewis came off the bench when he knocked in a run on a play in which the Reds scored twice on the same play. Lewis knocked in one of the runs and the Brewers committed an error allowing a second run to score. One ball and one strike on Lewis. Where he is keeping the off speed pitches on Fred Lewis. First pitch a change up at 71. The second pitch also a change up but at 80 miles an hour. Now they play Lewis as a pull hitter in the outfield. We talked about it the other night. We've seen Lewis drive the ball into left center field, and there's a lot of real estate out there. This one hooked foul. And it's one and two to Fred Lewis. Well, if you're Lewis, though, what you're thinking about is getting that runner over to third base. The Reds don't have to get both runs back in this inning, but they, with a, with a leadoff runner at second base, you at least have to score on one, or you would think so. So Lewis has got to figure out a way to hook that ball to the right side of the infield and get Renteria to third. Make it easy for Miguel Cairo to drive him in. One and two to Lewis. And again, way out in front. I went 73 miles per hour. Okay's aside with his catcher Jonathan Lucroy. Look back at Renteria. And a short hop. And breaking is Renteria to third. And there's one out in the inning. Well, Bettencourt almost makes up for the error that he made because he had a, a guy in front of him trying to go to third base on a ball that's hit to his right. I mean, that is one of the main things you learn as a youngster. I mean, he is out from here to everywhere. And Bettencourt erases the man at second base, and now the Reds have traded that for a runner at first. That's a bad base running play. Hmm. So now runner at first with one out of the inning, and here's Cairo. He swung the bat well when he has played. 316 hitter with a home run and eight driven in. Playing in place of Scott Rowland tonight. Boy, outside of Jay Bruce, the Reds have gotten so very little power in terms of home runs. I mean, overall as a team, because of the rate which they were clubbing balls over the fence in April, and Jay Bruce's month in May, you know, they still rank among the league leaders in home runs. But Votto and Roland have one home run combined. In well over 250 plate appearances, primarily batting in that 3-4 hole. 
Then you look down the rest of the lineup tonight. After you get through Stubbs, Phillips, Votto, and Bruce, the Reds have four home runs combined from the quartet of Renteria, Lewis, Cairo, and Hannigan. So you know what Dusty Baker is thinking with that in mind. If we're not hitting balls in the seats, we have to be very shrewd as to how we run the bases and play some of the small ball. Or at least just play basic fundamental baseball. I mean, you don't have to be shrewd. You don't have to be tricky. You don't have to have any daring do on the base pass, but just don't try to advance a third base on a ground ball to your right when you're a base runner out there. Markham will play to second base and gets the out there. Two away. Well, join the Reds is coming. Or actually a week from Sunday, June the 19th, for Dad Appreciation Day. The first 10,000 dads through the gates receive a Reds batting helmet, desk caddy, thanks to Kyle. For tickets to bring your dad down to see the Reds take on the Blue Jays, visit Reds.com or call 513-381-REDS today. Of course, the calendar turning over to the month of June today. And the Reds an even 500 record. For the first two months of this 2011 year, they certainly have had to endure a, a great amount of change. Players up, players down, especially in that pitching staff, not only the rotation, but in the bullpen. Brought up earlier that the 21 pitchers that were on the 40 man roster before the regular season began, 20 of the 21 have been used by the Reds. Oh, and by the way, They've had to put a couple of other guys on that 40 man roster to allow them to pitch or at least a chance to pitch for the major league club. One and two on Ryan Hannigan. Reds have used 19 different pitchers in the last 17 games. That is just an unbelievable run of bad luck. Homer Bailey played catch yesterday for the first time since he left his start in Philadelphia. Pitch taken low and thrown out as Cairo to win the inning. Reds trail at the end of two, two nothing.
with something, you got something wrong in the big list, you can fix it right away. So you have to go back to the minor league and fix it and come back to the big league and do a better job. Usually, you know, when you're out of sync, it's like tuning your car. It's usually not something major. Usually it's something that's minor that sets everything back in the sink, you know, and, uh, and, and the hard part is finding what that minor thing is. Our Geico Direct quotes from Edinson Volquez, of course, trying to iron out the wrinkles down at AAA Louisville. They'll pitch again tomorrow night. And the Reds are hoping, Chris, if all goes well, he could be back in the Reds' starting rotation. Well, they need him. I mean, they need some consistency in their rotation, Tom, and that's what everybody thought at the very beginning of the year, that they had a, you know, a bunch of young guys in the rotation that were getting better and better, that they were getting their sea legs underneath them, and that because they were young, they'd be able to stay healthy. And give the Reds a lot of innings. That has so far not been the case, at least not with all of them. Two, three, and four in the batting order, and Nigel Morgan is hit with a pitch. You know, that ought to not be able to happen. I mean, there is no way that Nigel Morgan, he leaned into the pitch. I mean, there is a rule in baseball that says a batter has to make an attempt to get out of the way of the pitch. If the home plate umpire is going to see it right there, he's looking over the right shoulder of Ryan Hannigan, and he sees it. Morgan lean into it. I mean, he's got all that padding on, all those braces. That's ridiculous. I mean, and not only Tim Timmons, I'm not picking on him tonight, but it seems to be more and more of that where guys are leaning into it. I mean, that's one thing when you're not wearing any kind of guard or, or armor out there, but when you're all loaded up with shin guards on your elbows, hey, try to get out of the way of the pitch. It's just unfair. That ball is about four three inches off the plate and you get a hit by pitch. And Morgan very much a base stealing threat. Now he's missed so much time this year. He's missed well over a month with two different trips to the disabled list. A leg injury the first time came back for all the two and a half days. Before he broke a bone in his hand which put him out another three weeks. Big lead. Big lead is right. Two out of three in stolen base attempts. Double play ball here. Brandon gets to the bag, and it is. So perhaps justice served on Niger Morgan. Two away in the inning. Well, sometimes you get a lucky ground ball right at the right spot. That's what happened for. Mike Lee, nice play by Brandon Phillips. We say that a lot. Prince Fielder dropped a single in front of Fred Lewis out in shallow left field. His only time up tonight. Breaking ball low and in and leaked behind Fielder at 2-0. Bases empty, two are out. Milwaukee with a two nothing lead. They got both of their runs off Mike Leak in the first. And now the count full on the Milwaukee first baseman. Talked about it the last couple of nights. Fielder along with Albert Pujols, two of the real sluggers at the first base position in the National League. For that matter, all the baseball. And both of them playing in the final year of contracts. One line and fouled out of play. Well, if you're a fielder, I mean, you talk about being in a perfect position. If indeed there are teams out there, and let's face it, when you're talking about guys like Fielder and Pools, there are only a handful of teams that can afford to bring you in. Now, there may be some surprise teams that come out of nowhere. I read an article today about how the Baltimore Orioles were willing to step up and spend a lot of money for a first baseman who would hit in the middle of the order. That could be Prince Fielder.
All brought to you by Progressive. Who is most likely to make the All-Star team, if not more than one? One, Joey Votto. Two, Jay Bruce. Three, Brandon Phillips. Text your answer to 37664, and standard texting rates do apply. Of course, Jay Bruce right now, so hot. Off a Player of the Week award, more than likely a Player of the Month award coming tomorrow. There's a half swing by Hannigan. And a roller right at fielder, one pitch and one out. But Brandon Phillips, as we mentioned, is at least through the first round of balloting, announced balloting. The leading vote getter among all National League second basemen. Now look. It will be virtually impossible for Joey Votto to win the vote at first base. I mean, when Albert Pools plays in a league and the Cardinals selling out virtually every single night. And Pools, of course, uh, the winner of the MVP already a couple of times. Pools is going to win the vote. The only guy who could get a run for his money there would be Ryan Howard. For the and same again, reason. Same reason. They sell out. And in Philadelphia, they do sell out every night. They've ripped off better than 152 consecutive sellouts at Citizens Bank Park. Baseball came out from the stands. Billy Hatcher over there to flip it back. So a count of two and zero oh on Mike Lee. Three and zero, oh, beg your pardon. And there's a strike. Three balls and a strike to Lee. He'll be followed by Drew Stubbs. Well, the fans so far believing Brandon Phillips is the man. I am very surprised, at least right now, that that vote would have Jay Bruce in third. Brandon Phillips, I get it. Now, Jay Bruce leads the league at home on an RBI. Yeah, but it's a lot. It's a lot harder to make the All-Star team as a an outfielder, given the fact there's so many great outfielders around the league. If you're going to be voted in, now I think Jay Bruce is going to make the All-Star team. But in fact, I think that Brandon Phillips and Joey Votto will be on the All-Star team. Well, maybe I misread the question. I, the, the question, I don't think, was who would be voted in. It was just who's most likely to make the team. Yeah, well, I think they all will. Bruce Stubbs about it. Breaking ball away. You know, all three with a legitimate shot. Yeah. They got votes on my ballot. I hope they have votes on yours. You've got your son Luke at the game tonight, sitting up there in the up there with the Champions Club. Why don't you give him a stack of ballots and have him go to work? He and his buddies, as I can promise you. After uh, going through school for the last seven hours earlier today, he's not interested in sitting around and reading a whole lot right now. He's watching a ball game, and I mean he is dialed in. And by the way, that guy's not my son. One and two to stuff to the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. As far as you know. <laughs> two and two, the count on Stubbs. With two outs and nobody on. And that's on the inside corner. Good pitch there. Real good pitch. So one, two, three, go the Reds. We played three, and the Brewers in front, two nothing.
Shield JTM Food Group. Meyer Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealer. By Geico, 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And my Blue Rhino, if you're ready to grill, grab a Rhino. Visit bluerhino.com for a propane tank near you. to lead things off. Brewers in front as they bat in the fourth inning against Mike Leak. 2-0. Brewers got a leadoff home run in the first inning from Ricky Weeks. After the home run on the very next pitch, Niger Morgan lined a triple down the right field line and scored on the ground out by Ryan Broad. And this one whacked into left center field. That'll be a double for Hart. So the Brewers have had at least one base runner in every inning. And they've hit in three of the four frames. But Corey Hart's got such great plate coverage. Now this ball comes right back over the center of the dish right there. Looks like Ryan Hannigan wanted it away and it was up as well. But you've got to really to be effective against Corey Hart. A little bit of a bigger swing because he's a tall guy. You've got to be able to change speeds. If he dials up that fastball and guesses right. He's got a lot of bat speed. Well now Luke Roy who fouled out to Ryan Hannigan over near the Brewer dugout his first time up settles in runner at second and nobody out breaking ball in there strike. Jonathan Lucroy is having a very good year. Lucroy, you may remember very early in spring training, broke his finger and was not available on opening day. But since coming off the disabled list shortly after the season opener, six home runs and 25 runs batted in. Those are very good numbers for Jonathan Lucroy. Troy started last year all the way down at double A and moved to triple A by the time May came around. And shortly after that was a starter with a major league club when Greg Zahn was injured. And he is the first drafted and developed starting catcher the Brewers have produced since back in the mid 90s when Mike Matheny came up through their system. So it's been a while. Hundred second, nut out, 0 and 2 on Lucroy. They nearly hit him with a pitch. Yeah, Luke Roy, just a second year catcher, is a guy that is a very good offensive force. He's going to get better and better in that category. Just flying open a little bit. That ball's got a lot of movement on right there. Now, there's a guy that's trying to get out of the way of the pitch. That was Niger Morgan. He would have be standing on first base right now. That one lined hard in the right, and that is an excellent piece of hitting by Luke Roy. He hit it hard, almost had a hit. But plenty deep enough to the right side to advance a runner on to third, one out. Yeah, as I said, Tom, he is a very excellent offensive player. Right now, as a second year catcher, he's still learning his way behind the plate, still learning the league, how to set hitters up, how to follow scatter reports. He's going to be a player around here for a long time and a good one. So now, runner at third, only one out in the inning. And here he is, Unieski Betancourt. He had a single in the center field his first time up. Red's going to bring the infield in. Strike one. Brewer 
was not afraid to use the suicide squeeze. It was a big weapon for Mike Sosha all those years in Anaheim, and Ron Renicki has brought the same style of play to these Brewers, but there's a base hit into center field. And that'll make it 3 0 Milwaukee. Uh, just basic fundamental baseball. The Brewers have been able to do it, the Reds have not. Reds have not run the base as well. They've not advanced runners when they've had the opportunity, but the Brewers do it like it's very easy. A fly ball to right by Luke Croy gets the runner to third base. They bring the infield in. You make a 300 hitter, a 500 hitter. And another run for the Brewers. Last time they had this combination on base and at the plate, they try to hit and run. Council bounced out to second, but he advanced a runner on to second. 0 and 1 on Craig Council. Tonight, the 20th game in 20 days. And of course, really, they've played more than just the 20 games in the 20 days because of all the extra inning games, especially that 19 inning affair in Philadelphia. A week ago tonight. Well, that seems like two months ago, doesn't it, Chris? It we does. were in Philadelphia. Game seemed like it was two months long. Although I really have to commend you on the job you did that night, staying awake, staying positive, staying right on top of things. Well, that's very kind of you. Thanks for keeping me awake that night. Well, you told me you carried me through the front nine and I carried you the final ten. Yeah. Is that the way it worked? That's why I owe you one. Really? Of course, nothing much happened during your innings. <laughs> one in, one the count on count. And now two balls and a strike. Well, same count as that hit and run was before the two one count. You called it. You, know, you saw Mike Leak, and he was so concerned with Unieski Betacourt at, uh, at first base. Ben Court still not much of a lead out there, but that doesn't show you very much. On a hit and run, it doesn't matter. Not this time. Liner caught by Cairo. They'll double up that and point. The inning is over, but a scoring inning for the Brewers. And after three and a half, a three-nothing lead. a Toyota sign during our game tonight. Kevin Cronin, former lead singer of REO Speedwagon, who lives now out in Amelia. Currently drives a 2011 forerunner. We'll win the new Tundra display here at Great American Ballpark, and you can register for your chance to win it in an upcoming game by stopping by your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers.
you like that band? Did you, Chris? REO Speedwagon? Oh, yeah. You can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. That's Big League album. I don't have that one. That's one of the best. Popped up on the first pitch to Brandon Phillips, and just like that, one pitch and one out. That's back to back innings. One pitch and one out. All right, Chris, our AT&T trivia question tonight. What are we looking at? Well, let's see what we've got here. Who are the three Reds managers to win division titles with different teams? Three Reds managers have won division titles with three different teams. Who are they? Now, I'm never going to say anything's a layup because we've asked questions on here where guys at home are going, that's a layup, and, and you nor I had any idea what the correct answer was. But, but these are three guys within a you know, 20, 20 year time frame. All right. So, so the easiest one is the guy in the dugout right now. Precisely. You know that Dusty Baker has done that. That's right. The Giants, the Cubs, and last year with the Reds. Right. The other two guys were both here in the same decade. Joey Votto has the only Reds hit tonight against Sean Markham when he lofted a single in the left field back in the first inning. And once again, the Brewers play him as a dead pull hitter, much like the Reds play on Prince Fielder. That's an interesting thing about Sean Markham. He's not afraid to throw the changeup on any count. I mean, most pitchers, when they get to 3 1, 2 0, oh, that's a fastball count. Most. Of course, that's beginning to change more and more as hitters are getting better and better at hitting that 3 1 fastball. The wiggly fingers is a changeup sign. Two out. I'm wondering if and I wasn't a great hitter, Tom, but I mean just as a as a as an observer of the game now, you get a guy whose forte is a changeup. He throws more changeups, Sean Markham does, Markham does, than he does fastballs. He only throws 29% fastballs. So why not move way up in the batter's box and as close to the plate as possible, just trying to take that pitch away from him just a little bit. I mean, because you're not doing a whole lot. The other way. Now the Reds did have success against Markham first time he pitched against them. Mainly because Markham couldn't throw the ball over the plate. But he's throwing strikes tonight. I just think you have an unconventional style pitcher. Sometimes it takes an unconventional approach to try to get him where you need him. That was the kind of thing you saw frequently around Major League Baseball going back. You know, way back, but even as recently as the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s, three straight changeups to take care of Jay Bruce in a 1 2 3 fourth for Markham.
Fox Sports Ohio. Jim Day, Jeff Pacoro, and you get Chris Welsh right before the first pitch. Now, what do you call that segment? I love that segment. I tell you all the time that you do it. Chris's checklist. The checklist. That is a big league segment. Has become very, very popular with all the folks that are tuned into Reds Live. It's a lot of fun. I like working with Jeff Picoro and Jim Day in the pregame show. Kind of get you fired up, ready to go for that first pitch. Ken Dream Weaver, the producer of the Reds Live. What we ought to think about doing is maybe expanding that checklist segment to include, say, Tom's tidbits. Tidbits. What do you think? Doesn't have the, the, the ring to it. I, mean, yeah, I know where you're the, going, but if it doesn't have a ring to it of Chris's checklist. And you give fans, as we've talked about many times before, a great nuggets. I think maybe that we ought to make that a subject of our text poll. Let the people decide. Well, I know they like Chris's checklist for sure. There's a roller by Markham. Foul. I mean, you always have three things before every game that you've been preparing during the course of a day early in the morning and uh, starting on trends to keep an eye on for that upcoming game that particular night. Look out down there. Strikes to begin the inning. All right, Chris, how about our trivia question answer? All right, the by, question by was if you remember the question, which three Reds managers have won division titles with three different teams? Well, we got Dusty Baker. And you said with all within the 20 years, and one of them within barely within 20 years, Davey Johnson and Lou Pinello. Mm -hmm. Lou doing it, of course, with the Reds in Seattle. And then the Cubs, you know about Dusty, we told you about his three teams. And we were talking about Davey Johnson the other day on the bus when we were in Philadelphia. What a great night that was. Sure it was. Davey Johnson did it, of course, with the Mets, won a World Series title there. Took the Reds to a league championship series. And Baltimore to an LCS. Very impressive names on that list. Yeah, all those guys on that list, as impressive as they are, were fired at least twice. Right? I mean, if you're going to win with three different teams, you have to get fired to go move on to the next team. Well, I mean, I, I know where you're going with that. That ball shot past Joey Votto off the bat of Ricky Weeks in the right field. You know, Lou Pinello, I don't know if he was actually fired or just not rehired here. Because he signed, what, a three-year deal that just expired? When you boil it down, is there a difference? Legitimate point. We're not really firing you. We're just not going to rehire you. And then Seattle, he left Seattle on his own terms because he wanted to go back home and manage in Tampa, right? In fact, he was traded, if I remember correctly, from Seattle to Tampa Bay. That's right, he was traded. He retired from the Cubs last year. Well, he got was, fired from the Yankees job, did he not? As a manager, yes. But never won a division championship for them. Correct. Everybody's been fired from the Yankees. If Joe Torrey is fired, Anybody can be fired. You're right about that. 1 0 on Nigel Morgan. Runner at first, one out. Brewers with a 3 0 lead here in the fifth. I can't believe even now, and Joe Torre has already managed, of course, with another team, managing out west until he walked away from the Dodgers at the end of last year. Still can't believe with all the wins he had with the Yankees, the division titles, the World Series. 
Toronto will play to second. They get one there, and that's all they'll get on the speedy Morgan. Two are out in the inning. It's still hard to believe that he was not rehired by the New York Yankees. Ryan Braun among our Honda leaders in runs scored. In fact, number one in the National League. Well, the Reds have three on that list. The Brewers have two on that list. Braun tonight 0 for 2. Is ground out in the first inning. Knocked in a run. And twice has bounced out to Brandon Phillips. Seven hits for the ball, and Morgan is picked off. He went diving back to the bag, and his hand never got there. A hit, nobody left. Reds come to bat in the fifth, trying to get back in it, trailing three nothing. Every day in the 100 days of summer sweepstakes at FoxSportsOhio.com. The 100 days of summer sweepstakes presented by the Ohio Department of Public Safety reminding you to buckle up. It's a guaranteed home run every trip every time. Sounds good. 100 days of summer. And a bunt by Renteria. He legs out the throw on a good effort by Council. And Renteria avoid to begin the Reds' fifth inning, trailing 3 0. Second time in two at bats that Edgar Renteria has been aboard, reached on an error the first time, and lays down a perfect punt. I mean, Craig Council was playing a couple of steps behind the bag and really didn't have much of a play right there, but he made it close. Good punt, good defense. Nicely done to get the inning going because the Reds have over the last few innings not had anything going at all against Sean Markham. That ends a string of eight in a row retired by Markham. And here's Fred Lewis. First pitch swinging. Little dribbler to the right side. Renteria will advance on to second base. One out.
to bring Miguel Cairo to the plate. He bounced to a fielder's choice on a comebacker to Markham and then was thrown out trying to steal second base, ending the second inning. Reds only have two hits in the game. A first inning single by Votto and a bun hit by Renteria to open this fifth. the name Davy Johnson a little while ago and one of the things that Davy Johnson used to talk about frequently before he ever went to the American League as a manager of course he played over in the American League for many many years there's a high fly ball into left center field an easy play for Morgan and here two away and here comes Renteria to third base and he's in there sliding safely was a well planned play because you the scouting report on Niger Morgan says he doesn't have a great arm it's a little bit below average arm he's got excellent speed and Renteria knew when that ball went up there and it pushed Morgan back even a little bit in left center field he was going to take third. Well you have the number eight hitter now in Ryan Hannigan pitcher spot due up next and with that in mind Dusty Baker as Jose Arredondo getting loose in a hurry. Scoring chances have been few and far between tonight. But should they just pitch around Hannigan? The Reds are going to have a pitcher ready to go for the next inning. At bat for Mike Lee. You know, to finish the thought on Davey Johnson, he was always a big proponent, if the situation presented itself, for bringing over a pitcher, a starting pitcher, from the American League to a National League team. He believed that in the American League because of the designated hitter. The pitchers in the American League learned how to pitch. At a faster pace than a lot of National League pitchers learned how to pitch. I wasn't talking about the guy like Dwight Good who's throwing 8000 miles an hour at 19 years old. He's talking about the Sean Markham's of the world. Well, you can take that one step further, Tom, and take a pitcher out of the American League East where they're facing the Red Sox and the Yankees and recently the, the Tampa Bay Rays. I mean, and every time you turn around, if you're playing those teams 18 times like Sean Markham did when he was a member of the Toronto Blue Jays, it stands to reason that he would have much better success in the National League where the teams aren't quite as good. The pitchers are in the lineup, so you got one every nine batters. You've got the pitcher coming up there. And that's been a kind of a general thought for a long time. That could have been Davy Johnson, who was the first one to kind of pioneer that thinking. And it wouldn't surprise me one bit because he was a very innovative thinker and a good manager. But now a lot of general managers are thinking the same thing. You see it written all the time. One and two on Ryan Hannigan, runner at third. Reds losing three nothing. And and again, beat on a fastball, and this is playable for Hart, and that will end the inning. Reds lead a runner at third, and trail at the end of five, three nothing.
take a moment and send our heartfelt sympathies to the family of Ryan Martin who lost his life over the weekend. He was the operations manager for Lion Video. That's a company that supplies all of our cameras, replays, technical gear, so we can bring you Reds baseball every night. So to our friends at Lion Video, to Ryan's mother, Jody, his father, Timothy, sisters, Kimberly and Terry, and the entire Martin family, again, our, our thoughts and prayers, our deepest condolences from all of us at Fox Sports Ohio and the Reds to all of you. Three, four, and five in the Brewers batting order here against Mike Leak. Three runs, seven hits for the Brewers, no runs, two hits for the Reds. Told your Braun 0 for 2, a pair of ground outs, once into a double play, and once to drive in a run. Yeah, Mike Leak settled down and pitching himself a pretty good ball game. He's spreading the hits around, he's given up seven hits, but you, know, you take away those two high pitches that he threw out over the zone, one to Ricky Weeks and one to Niger Morgan to start the ball game off, and he settled down very nicely. A 3 1 strike. Braun was on his way as if that were ball four. So a full count to Braun to be followed by Prince Fielder and Corey Hart. Tonight, the decisive game of this three game series after the Reds won the opener, the Brewers rallied to win last night. And the Reds have not been able to solve the puzzle of Sean Markham through the front five. But not a surprise Markham is pitching like he is an ERA at 2.8 before the game began. That ball's in the air to deep left center field and oh. stops with a running grab. Boy, the amount of territory he covered the last three or four strides. That was just a remarkable play made by Stubbs without ever leaving his feet. I think he probably surprised himself at this play because it looked like for a while he was not going to get it. He kind of runs with his arms at his side as you should and then at the last second reaches out just that extra effort right there to get his glove at the very extension of his left arm going out there wow ground ball to the third baseman Cairo and he'll throw out fielder in there two away in the inning you know Tom we see him every day Drew Stubbs out there and you know you get spoiled but and, and you also get to be slanted in his favor because he's our guy. But, you know, I'm hard pressed to think of another center fielder out there that covers as much ground as Drew Stubbs does. Now, there are a few. But he can go get them. So a two up, two down, and that'll bring up Corey Hart. Hart is fly to right, double to left center, scored in the fourth inning. Mike Leake spot due to lead off the bottom of the sixth inning, then back to the top of the order, and Drew Stubbs and Brandon Phillips trying to get something, anything going against Sean Markham. Two and one to Hart. Two balls and two strikes on Hart. 
Cardinals and the Giants underway. Giants batting in the second inning against Jake Westbrook in a scoreless game. That's Tim Lincecum on the mound tonight for San Francisco. And a check swing, he went around, and that will retire the side. So a 1 2 3 inning for Leak. Reds trail 3 0. Like freeze cam, you just saw a play a moment ago, and what a great play it was. I don't know about you, Chris. I didn't think he'd get there. I didn't think so either. That ball hooking away from him and hit very hard and long by Ryan Braun. And he, you know, you were shading around a little bit towards right center field when he started. Uh, Mike Leak done for the night. Chris Heisey stepping in. To pinch hit for him and another quality start from Mike Leake. Six innings, three runs or less. That is six of eight starts now for Leake. He has given the Reds a quality start. You know, the only reason his earned run average is over five is because the two poor starts he had were really poor. All right, let's see if the Reds can get something going here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Chris Heisey to lead it off, batting for Leake. Leake strikes out three, does not walk a batter. He does hit a batter. And gives up three runs and seven hits in his six innings tonight. Well, he is he's really fooling the Reds by pulling the string. I mean, it's no secret. Everybody knows that Sean Markham's got a great changeup. I'll tell you that, you know, I remember talking to Johnny Bench long after I finished pitching. And he talked about facing me. I was a slow ball pitcher. I threw a lot of changeups, kind of like Markham, not as good as Markham, but I threw a lot of off-speed stuff. And he said, you know, when I, he came to play against me, he would think slider, would never even think fastball because my fastball was essentially a slider speed on a lot of other pitchers. And so you eliminate the, in your mind the big change in speed that you normally think. You're thinking fastball at 90 and change up around 80 or 75 or, or miles an hour or so. And he's working his magic with that change up time and time again. I just think it's time for a little different strategy with a guy like Sean Markham. And this is not the only time you're going to see him. Well, as he thought he had started the inning with a walk, instead, Tim Timmons says strike three. And that's six of them in the game for Markham. But it's coming Sunday. It's Meyer Family Day. The Reds take on the Dodgers when one family member buys a full price ticket, the entire family. It's non-premium tickets at half price. Call 3-in-1-Reds or go to Reds.com slash family. Offer valid in advance of game day. Stubbs lined out to the left fielder Ryan Braun leading off the first inning. And then looked at strike three in the third. For Stubbs. The 
continuing to bat in that leadoff spot after a really good run is had a tough time of it along with a number of his teammates here over the last three weeks. Stubbs has struck out 71 times so far this year. That is most in the National League. Six more than Ryan Howard. Two out. And another change up that time. Boy, Markham's got it looking good. Looks like it's going to be a strike. There's his grip. It's a it's a very conventional grip. It's a circle change grip. He takes his index finger off the ball and he gets right out there and he makes sure he sells it like a fastball. Keep that arm speed going. Explode off the mound with your upper body so the hitter sees it coming. At least your body and your arm but he doesn't see the ball. You know you got to look at that last pitch right there by Markham and I think maybe it illustrates better than any other pitch we've seen tonight what you brought up very early on in the game about moving up in the batter's box. If we still have that pitch downstairs and look at where it was about a foot in front of the plate as opposed to where it wound up by the time it hit the catcher's mitt there had to be a six to eight inch difference. Yeah. Well, it's all it's designed to drop at the very end of the of the pitch. I mean, that's what you work on as a pitcher. You want that baby to, to move the last five or six feet. That ball hit hard in a straightaway center field, but Morgan able to leap up and get it, and that'll end the inning in one, two, three fashion. We go to the seventh. Brewers three, Reds nothing. Nation on U.S. News and World Reports Honor Roll for Best Children's Hospitals 2011 by your Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky Honda dealers and by Wendy's. You know when it's real. Well, what a great place to hang out on a summer night, Fountain Square in downtown. It's always jumping on the weekend. A lot going on downtown. We hear from more and more people that come in from out of town. With visiting teams that are here for a weekend. I mean, naturally, during the week, things are a little, a little quiet. As Jose Arredondo takes over on the mound for Mike Leak. He's thrown the ball very well since being brought up from the minor leagues after beginning the year on the disabled list. For the Reds, stay for more fun. Make it a home run weekend. Book your trip at CincinnatiUSA.com. 
Our good friend Linda Antis. She'll be stopping by sometime on the next homestand. Give us an update on everything going on in and around the greater Cincinnati area with summertime upon us. Of course, the Kentucky Speedway will have its first big NASCAR event this summer. Chris, it's always great when Linda comes up here to say hello. It really is. She's got such a, a wealth of information on what's going on, things that I had no idea that were going on in the area. She can just laundry list those babies one after another. It's a great website. I've been on there many times since Linda was up here to visit us. Shallow center field, no problem for Stubbs there. As part of our Fox Sports Supports Charitable Initiative, we're proud to support Stand Up to Cancer and all the work they're doing to fund groundbreaking research that helps accelerate treatment to patients. For more information, please visit standup to the number two cancer.org slash Fox Sports. First Fox Sports selects a, a different charity endeavor on all of the different sporting events that they have throughout the calendar year. During NASCAR, Major League Baseball, college football, and of course the National Football League. Line. We have a nice blend of folks here tonight. 3,800 seventh graders through 12th graders who had an A average during this school year. Straight A night, got into the game for free. That's been a long standing tradition here in Cincinnati. Really is great. A great deed by the Reds. Really is. Congratulations to all those kids and their moms and their dads and, uh, and their teachers. Being rewarded for all that hard work. Administrators and so forth. Good going. Now, you and I probably didn't make too many of those Friday nights. Oh, you better speak for yourself on that. Well, I, I did. I, I know I did for certain, but it meant <laughs> borrowing from a neighbor. A liner is viral. I mean, my, my neighbor was home studying. So and I decided to the ticket. Sure. That's a good way to do it. That's a real good way to do it. Tonight is also police and fire appreciation night. All the firemen, policemen and women. We do such a great job in and around Cincinnati and the surrounding communities over in the Commonwealth and stretching as far as Indiana. We love having them here tonight as well. Two away for Ari Dondo. Oh, and one account on Council. Two balls and a strike. Council has bounced out to second and lined into a double play, which ended the Brewer fourth inning. Milwaukee got two of its three runs in the first. And got one more in the fourth inning. Two and two to Council. Leak going the front six. Already don't know his first inning of work. And the Reds are hoping to break through late against Sean Markham, who's barely broken a sweat here tonight. 
Reds have only left two runners on. Two pitch on the way. And it's popped up. Is there enough room in foul ground? There was room, but neither Cairo nor Hannigan could get there in time. Well, I think there's a little bit of communication right there, non communication anyway, between Cairo and Ryan Hannigan. I think both of them could have got there, but at the last moment, they kind of held up a little bit, wondering if the other guy was going to get it. Neither called for it. Hannigan's a hard time finding it. He finally finds it. He's going full blast at it, really only taking his eye off at one time. Well, get him out of this pitch. Night pitching is at bat upcoming. Pitcher spot due up next. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Three runs, seven hits for the Brewers. No runs, two hits for the Reds against Markham. And now the 3 2 again on Council. And he draws a walk. Well, when the Reds get it done with an RBI this year, that means another $25 from Shakely goes to the Reds Community Fund. Shakely, it's done. Sean Markham bats here in the seventh, working on a two hitter. Through the front six, Markham has only thrown 77 pitches in the game. Reds have had base runners in three innings tonight. A single by Votto in the first, an error by Betancourt, allowing Renteria to reach in the second, and then Renteria had a bun hit to begin the fifth. And that's been it so far. Still more three cracks at him. in a strike. Now Arredondo going to walk far off the pitching mound and try and regroup here after a lengthy battle with Council. A nine pitch at bat which turned into a walk. And now he's behind the pitcher three and one and it's on the ground. Cairo the short way and that'll retire the side. Otto Bruce Renteria coming up with the Reds down three.
Friends, you can get to Great American Ballpark this Friday for Free Agent Fridays presented by Men Martini. Starting at 540 on the fan zone, enjoy a singles mixer, drink specials, have the big Jimmy Buffett karaoke contest. And don't forget, Friday night it's also fireworks. So how are you going to beat all that? 381 Reds or visit Reds.com slash free agent. All right, let's see if this is the inning. Where the Reds can make something happen against Mr. Markham, who's only given him two hits. A first inning single by Votto. And that was really just a little flare flipping the ball into left field. And their other hit was a bunt single by Edgar Renteria. Settles in. He is singled and struck out. And again, that entire left side to work with is again they put on the shift defensively. You know, between innings, Tom's our stat guys, Joe Luckup really came up with some very interesting information about Sean Markham. We told you that he's got a changeup, and he throws a lot of changeups. But until you hear the numbers, you really never know. Coming into this inning, he threw 28 changeups in this ball game and only 16 fastballs. Wow! And on those changeups, he's had 19 swings and misses, or 19 swings on the changeups, and 10 of them were misses. Right through the teeth of the shift in the right field, a hit by Vado, and there's a base hit on the changeup. Joel Luckup bring is a game tonight. That little guy wants something to get fired up about. Jay's been out ahead of just about everything that Markham has thrown up there tonight. And he's done a good job, Markham has anyway, of keeping the ball down and away to Jay Bruce. Where Jay Bruce has made his money in the month of May is when a pitcher makes a mistake up. He has just been all over. Markham has not made a mistake to Bruce yet tonight. Change up one. Change up grip. Made a mistake and he hammers it to right. It's a one run game. What a roll Jay Bruce is on. I'll tell you, he gets one mistake pitch to hit, and he is all over. Jay Bruce safe at home, safe and secure. New York life. So a one run game. There's nobody out here in the red seventh inning after the single by Votto and the bomb from Bruce. And on the ground of Betancourt. One away. Bruce now with a league leading 17 home runs and a league best 46 runs batted in. Boy, that is impressive. Boy, is it up. almost 50 runs batted in, and we're here we are the first day of June.
course, 35 of Bruce's now, what, 46 runs batted in? 35 of the 46 have come in exactly one month. He had 11 RBIs at the end of April. And only four home runs. One and two on Fred Lewis. So now all of a sudden some life. That three run lead has been shaved to one. We'll see if the Reds can. Knock this thing up if not jump in front. And a one two again to Lewis. He is off the outside corner a rare fastball by Markham. No activity in the Milwaukee bullpen. This will be the 91st pitch of the game thrown by the Milwaukee starter. Two out. Well, this Saturday, Fox Saturday baseball again. Will follow the Red Legs. Matt Kemp and the Dodgers come to the Queen City to take on the Reds. The telecast of Fox Saturday Baseball begins at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Of course, the Reds were on last week. They're on again this Saturday, and they're on again next Saturday when they venture out west to take on the defending world champion Giants. But now Cairo, who's 0 for 2 in the game. And not anymore. Into the corner. And the Reds will have a tying run in scoring position here in the seventh inning with two out. Uh, Sean Markham getting the ball up just a little bit in this uh, inning. Gave up a hard hit ball to Joey Votto. A, a line drive of a home run by Jay Bruce. And he gets this one up just above the knees. And... Miguel Cairo strokes it nicely in the left left field. Well, Rick Cranitz going to come out and try and slow things down a little bit for Markham. As for the first time all night, there are bodies moving around in the Brewer bullpen. The Reds have action in their bullpen as well. Juan Porky Lopez answers a phone from the Reds dugout. And he's answering it again. He's keeping an eye on Bill Bray, who apparently is already set to go, checking in with Porky down there. See if Ryan Hannigan can drive in that run out at second base. And tie this baby up. Breaking ball off the outside corner. Reds have Scott Rowland standing in the on deck circle. Cody Cameron Lowe is up and throwing in the Brewer bullpen. We saw him last night for an inning. And it was a perfect inning. And again, so good a year ago, batting with runners in scoring position. But this year, only one for ten with runners in scoring position and two out. Three and oh. Nine 
ninety five pitches now thrown in the game by Markham. The sending began with a base hit by Votto in the right Bruce a two run home run to right. And after retiring Renteria and Lewis Cairo with a double in the left field corner. And he's a tying run out there at second base. Contemplating his options down in that dugout. Here's a 3 1 on Hannigan. Pulled into the corner, but foul. Boy, just a little too far out in front. And again, Sean Markham getting the ball up. I mean, the first five or six innings, Markham didn't throw rarely a ball above the hollow of the knees. And now he's getting that ball up. And really, what do you mean by up? When you're a guy that keeps the ball down around the knees, up means only about two or three inches. I mean, it only has to get to the top of the kneecap or even a couple of inches higher than that to make it very hittable. You lose some of the movement that you have on it. And he's been down normally around the line down here at the very bottom of the strike zone. Three and two now to Hannigan. Tying run at second. And Allen fouled off. Down the right field line towards the corner out of play. That's where Hannigan made the final out of the fifth inning in foul ground. of the night upcoming for Sean Markham. Reds have a tying run at second. Two out. Three two on Ryan Hannigan. And again fouled out of play. Well, the catcher Jonathan Lucroy out to talk things over. Before what will be an eighth pitch in this at bat in the 100th on the night for Markham. It's been his first real taxing inning of the night. By far the most pitches he's thrown in an inning. Can Hannigan deliver and tie this baby up? Roller down to Council. And that's that. So Markham survives. A two run seventh on the home run by Bruce. We move to the eighth, but now it's a one run game.
We're talking about a Jay Bruce blast. Named the National League Player of the Week yesterday. In the month of May, led the league in home runs, RBI, slugging percentage, runs, extra base hits. Batting 342. That's his 13th home run since May the 1st. Reds are down a run. As Milwaukee bats here in the eighth inning, it's still Jose Arredondo on the mound. As Hannigan rolls out to Council, stranding the tying run at third. Strike one to Ricky Weeks. You know, the more we see Arredondo, it seems as though the more and more his fastball is starting to come back to where it was in his days with Anaheim. We're yeah, about a guy yeah. who missed all of last year after Tommy John surgery. That's a good observation, Tom. You know, he has been climbing a little bit at a time. This is one of those instances where I think the radar gun can really be of a benefit. And a lot of times it's more of just a, you know, big deal. The guy's throwing 95 miles an hour, but he's getting hit all over the ballpark. But when you can gauge a pitcher's arm strength, from outing to outing, the way that Arandando has uh, been able to do so, it's nice. And you got to figure it's going to get better and better the further he gets away from that Tommy John surgery. One one to Weeks. And that stays up high. Two balls and a strike. Weeks, Morgan, and Braun. It's a big, big shutdown inning, needless to say, for Arandando. Reds get the two run home run by Bruce to make this a one run affair. Fastball again at 93 miles per hour on the inside corner. Weeks checking with the umpire Tim Timmons. Arredondo walked Council with two outs in the seventh, but retired the pitcher to end the inning. And you got to wonder whether or not Markham stays in the game. With the Reds bat in the eighth. That's a foul ball. Brewers had Cameron Lowe getting loose in their bullpen while the Reds were batting in the seventh. The final pitch to get the final out in the seventh for Markham was his 100th pitch of the game. Stay fair. Cairo cuts it loose. One out. The Reds begin a three game series after a much needed off day tomorrow. The Dodgers come to town starting Friday night. And don't miss this exciting series presented by McDonald's. For tickets, call 381 Reds or visit Reds.com today. There are giveaways for all three games of the series. And Dusty Baker's going to come out of the dugout and check in with a home plate umpire Tim Timmons, meaning a double switch will take place. Scott Rowland will come on to take over at third for Cairo, which means he'll bat in the ninth spot, which means he leads off in the eighth. Hey, speaking of switches, you'll be working with Sean Casey over the weekend. The mayor coming back to the riverfront area to work the Dodger series with you. I'll be tuned in with that. You can guarantee. Very nice. Our skyline chili call to the bullpen. Summons a left-hander. Bill Bray. One out, none on. Reds down a run. We're in the eighth.
Dusty Baker, Scott Rowland now at third base and on the pitch, and what a year he's having. Left-hander Bill Bray. Well, he's faced 34 left-handers so far this year in the 28 games he's been in. He's only given up five hits. That's a batting average less than 150. Overall, he hasn't given up much to right-handers either. We'll face a right-handed, left-handed batting, I'm sorry, Nigel Morgan, and a right-handed batter and Ryan Braun on deck. Yeah, you can see why Dusty Baker wants to bring in Bray right here. I mean, he is tired of seeing Niger Morgan on base. Been on base three times tonight. Morgan plays with a lot of attitude out there. There's very little doubt about that. I mean, he's had his fair share of skirmishes throughout his major league career. I tell you, he brings some fire to a team when he's on the field. Walks the fine line. Yep. Some of the skirmishes to which you refer happen to be with his own teammates. But you want guys with emotion. Off the outside corner, the count is two and two on Niger Morgan. You know, if you have the kind of clubhouse to control a player like Niger Morgan, you might be able just to get the best out of him because he does have a lot of athletic talent. Boy, a career 201 hitter against left handed pitching. He went. just dropped the bad head right on it. Yeah. Shot one into center field. I mean, to look at this swing by Niger Morgan, I mean, it's an amazing batting average against lefties. I mean, he goes down there and gets it like he's been doing it his whole life. I mean, that you can't get a better pitch. A slider, ankle high, off the plate. Brian Braun will give him a pitch probably to see if he can't steal second. Every time Morgan's been on base tonight, two hits, been hit by a pitch, just scored a run. May want to throw over once just for fun. Morgan was on base three times last night, scored twice, drove in a run. The only time he got him out, he lined out to Jay Bruce in right field. Now Bray going to face a right-handed batting Ryan Braun. 0 for 3 in the game. He was robbed of a double his last time up on that spectacular running grab made in left center field by Drew Stubbs. Desperately trying to keep it right here to one run game one on one out. We're in the eighth inning Morgan a huge lead over at first and it's two and oh on Ryan Braun Good fastball in the inside corner Center field, room out there for Lewis, short of the wall, and there are two gone in the inning. Got behind of the count, two and zero. Oh, came back with a fastball, that time a cutter, and got in on him just a little bit, taking some of the power away. Our performance Honda Exmo look at that swing by Ryan Braun. Fielder. Fastball strike one. Oh, and one to Fielder. 
line in the center field. That'll fall a hit. So the two lefties hit a face play after basically owning them for a remarkable amount of time. They have the two hits Bray has surrendered in the inning. Well, Prince Fielder is just very hot. I mean, that's balls is up out over the plate. He doesn't miss those very often. That's more of a mistake pitch from a standpoint of height in the strike zone for Bill Bray. One the Morgan hit, you just have to tip your hat to him. Hey, Reds fans, if you're in the restaurant industry, let JTM Food Group help you with the great tasting products for your menu. Inspired solutions, better results, JTM. It's going to do it for Bray. They have the right hander Nick Massett ready in the bullpen, and he'll be summoned to face Corey Hart. A one run game. Brewers with two on and two out in the eighth. We're back in a moment. MLB.TV, baseball everywhere. Well, things have gotten a little tight here in the eighth inning. Reds got two in the bottom of the seventh to make it a one run game, but Nigel Morgan, a one out hit. Prince Fielder, a two out hit. And now on the face, Corey Hart, his right hander, Nick Massett. Doubled the left center in the fourth inning and scored the last Milwaukee run. After the Brewers got two runs in the first inning. Strike one. Two strikes on Corey Hart. Niger Morgan, the runner at second base. Prince Fielder at first. Vado playing behind him over there. And now Massett ready for the one two, and here it is. Fastball sails up and away. Well done by Massey. All right, here we go. Bottom 
the eighth. Scotty rolling to lead off. Stubbs to follow. Then Brandon Phillips. Rich trying to rally down on the run. Stay tuned for it here from Dusty before anybody else and get the most comprehensive highlights of your Cincinnati Reds and the game that was just played. The Reds Live Post Game brought to you by Kings Honda and the Kings Auto Mall. Visit KingsHondaUSA.com. You'll be a big part of that program again tonight. I'll be a part of it. Jim Day, Jeff Pecoro, Tom Brenneman. What a cast. Cameron Lowe takes over on the mound now to face Scott Rowland near the bottom of the eighth inning. Brewers jumped on Mike Leak with two in the first, got one more in the fourth. Reds have shut him down since before getting a two run home run by Jay Bruce in their last time up. And a lazy fly ball. One out. Go to the top of the order. Drew Stubbs 0 for 3 is lined out to left, struck out twice. Lowe has been one busy man. Tonight, his 30th game of the year. Lowe's a man they use as the bridge to try and get into their closer, John Axford. Strike one is stubbed. Talked about him the last two days. Brewers do not have a left hander in their bullpen. And now Stubbs behind 0 and 2. Great strikeout for Stubbs. Well, that strikeout rate has become extremely alarming for Drew Stubbs. 27 of them in his last 64 plate appearances.
Now Brandon Phillips with two down and nobody on in the eighth. And he's hit by a pitch. Hopefully Brandon's all right. Fastball that ran up and in on him. Not sure where it got him, Chris. I'm not sure either. I thought it may have got him around the, the hand area, but let's see. Just the wrist right below the hand area, right on that on that sweatband. All right, so now you have Joey Votto. Tying one at first. Very good speed and Brandon Phillips. Joey tonight, two out of three. A pair of singles, singled and scored on the Bruce home run one inning ago. That's it down the left field line, but out of play. Votto's last home run came in Cleveland, which of course ended the longest home run stretch of his major league career. Oh, and one to Joey Votto. Ball is up and away to even the count. Jay Bruce on deck. Big shift put on Votto again. Nearly the entire left side of the infield wide open for Votto. Two balls and a strike. And of course the Brewers are playing their prevent defense with their outfielders. They are hugging the warning track making sure that it'll be very very difficult for Joey Votto to hit a ball where he can get a double. They want him off second base. He would be the go ahead run. Two and one to Votto low to the plate. High fly ball. Straight away center and Votto. Delivers with a home run to give the Reds a lead. He generates some power. Look how he turns his hips into that ball. Keeps his head on it. That is some kind of strong. 2 2 to Jay Bruce. Take it outside. That ball measured at 431 feet. What a big time for a home run there by Votto. 
Gets ripped in the right. But Hart there to get it inning over. A two-run home run by Bruce in the seventh. A two-run blast by Votto in the eighth. We go to the ninth. Reds lead 4-3. defense and every night it's Brandon Phillips this one not of the spectacular variety just steady as she goes all right the Reds the way things were so quiet through the front six innings tonight they had two hits against Sean Markham they got a single by Votto to lead off the seventh Jay Bruce made it a one run game clubbing a two run home run to right they left a tying run in scoring position in that inning and then in the eighth, after the first two were retired, Brandon Phillips hit by a pitch which allowed Joey Votto to come to the plate. He homers to deep left center. Reds lead by a run and now a second chance for Francisco Cordero to get his 300 save. He had a chance in Philadelphia, you may remember, in the 19 inning game a week ago tonight and allowed the game tying home run to Ryan Howard. Well, there's no guarantee, Tom, but a little bit easier chance for Cordero tonight because he's got the bottom of the order here for the Brewers to retire. Jonathan Lucroy is 0 for 3 in the game. And there's a fastball strike. Lucroy to be followed by. Unieski Bettencourt and then the third baseman Craig Council. They do have some pop left on that bench. They have Casey McGee down there getting a rare day off. Good movement on that pitch away from Luke Boy. It's one and two. Well, he is painting the outside corner with that fastball. And if you've watched Cordero over the years, a lot of closers are like this. They prefer to pitch away. Making certain that if they make a mistake and the hitter is going to take off, take them deep to tie the ball game up, they make them go opposite field to do so. Broken bat, foul ball out of play. If there was ever a club, all they have been through over the last 20 days, which began with a five game winning streak. Including a sweep of the Cardinals to go into first place. And they lost the final two games of that homestand to the Pirates. Went on the road where they only won two games of the ten which they played. They played for 20 consecutive days. And this team needed that shot in the arm from Votto in the worst sort of way. And now can they nail it down? And at least give them something, Chris, to hang their hat on 
after a rough couple of weeks. Well, they've always played better at home this year, and I think that that was one thing that Dusty Baker, even throughout that long road trip, tried to get his guys to focus on each game on the road, but knowing full well that things could change and change for the better when they get back here to Great America Ballpark. This game would go a long way to make them feel like that. Going swinging Lucroy to begin the night. I remember that Francisco Cordero played, of course, for the Milwaukee Brewers for a couple of years. He's facing his old teammate. Don't know if he'd have the same amount of emotion now that he did several years ago. But he has had 18 saves and 19 chances against the Brewers, Brewers in his career. Now Bettencourt, two for three tonight, has knocked in a run with a single. He's hit the ball hard all three times up. Twice through the middle and lined out to third. Strike one. Again on the outer half. I'm liking Tim Tim in strike zone right now. Well, you're giving us a scouting report on all the umpires from now on throughout the rest of the year after the great research you did going into play last night. Three home runs so far this year. Bottom fell out of that pitch, two and two. But he's got a changeup and he's got a slider. I'm not so sure that was either one of those. That just looked like a two seam fastball that he kept down and had nice sinking action. Cordero able to knock it down, stays with it, and gets the out. Been a great crowd tonight. Once the Reds gave them something to get excited about, they've been a big factor in this game. Cordero are now away from becoming the 22nd pitcher in Major League history with 300 saves. And just by comparison, to give you an idea, there have been 27 players that have 3,000 hits. So there are fewer pitchers that have recorded. 300 saved and there are those with 3,000 hits or even 500 home runs. Of course home runs have existed a lot longer than saves have. Indeed they have. So it hits. Good point. One and one to Fred Council. Cordero trying to save it for Nick Massett. Massett only got one out, but man, it was a big out. Reds were behind three to two in the eighth inning. He came in with two on and two out and struck out Corey Hart. To be this, the kind of lift the Reds have been looking for for a while. Away and out of way from beating Milwaukee two out of three to open the home stand. And that is save number 300 in the career of Francisco Cordero. And he nails down an unbelievable win for the Reds late against the Brewers. Two run home runs by Jay Bruce in the seventh. Joey Votto to give him a lead in the eighth. 
And with their first off day in three weeks tomorrow, Chris, they can enjoy the off day with a series win over a division rival. And congratulations to Francisco Cordero. Uh, well said, Tom. You're right about the celebration. Nice series right here. This Milwaukee Brewer team came in here just as hot as can be after winning big time at home. They come back into Great American Ballpark and get beaten the series again. Francisco Cordero comes in and nails it down. But this is the type of game that the Reds lost when they were on this last road trip. The other team would score late in the game, like in the eighth inning, like the Cleveland Indians did. And the Reds would go on and lose. Maybe the worm has turned, and the Reds have found their winning ways again. What a huge win indeed for the Red Legs. 4 3 the final. And we're back with more right after this.